office chair because <clears throat> it doesn't squeak but uh I'll just be filming and I'll just be like over time I realize I'm like please like and subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up <laughs> oh what's up guys welcome back to my channel I'm so excited to share another experience with you that I've had that is a weird one and unexplainable. So today I want to chat about a little town in Colorado called Paonia, Colorado. It's super small. It took forever to drive there from Denver because we had to switch highways a couple times and you have to go through a couple little wine groves area and like back into like deep in the mountains and even when you snowboard there like you, you don't have most of the towns you snowboard at, man, they're like easy to get to. So I'm not used to driving to places like Paonia where it was like backcountry a little bit. Really pretty, a really cute little town, but strange. If you haven't watched my investigation on Paonia, I'll link it below. However, I guess I should just be honest and say I had hours and hours of footage for the Bross Hotel, and I was only able to show a little bit because I had a really bad production staff that day. I had hired some students, and a couple in particular were very chatty, and <clears throat> I think they were nervous because they had never been ghost hunting before, and that was my bad. I learned, you know, not to do that again. I thought I trained them enough, apparently I didn't, and then when lights went out to investigate, it was like and so even during the investigation when you're trying to like investigate and like hear EVPs and it's, it's, it's. so a lot of the footage was just ruined so that's why that episode isn't very long there was an intaker there um, at the Bross Hotel I don't think she was the actual owner however she kept referring to herself as um, the original owner of the Bross Hotel and that woman died in like 1928 or something like that. So I don't know if she was possessed, obviously she was probably possessed or oppressed or something. We had like full body apparitions that we caught. There was a part in the video that <clears throat> we're downstairs investigating in the basement and it sucks because on YouTube, it doesn't look as good and like as crisp as if you're like watching it on the Mac or even like a TV screen. If you watch it frame by frame, there is a shadow that emerges from Blake's shadow. Blake's a big dude, he's like 6'1". And this shadow emerges, steps out from Blake and walks to the right of the camera. And it's almost 3D, like you can see the whole thing happening. Once again, it just doesn't look as good and if you were like sitting here watching it frame by frame. It's unbelievable. Another thing that sucks is if you watch it frame by frame on like the Mac, which is like HD and like super mega pixels, this thing has like a tail. It has horns. The shadow is larger than Blake. So Blake's like 6'1", so this thing was bigger than that. Very like big arms and like smaller lower body. A lot of people have said, do you think it was a demon? You, you say tail and horns, and no, I actually don't think it was demonic. I think it was some sort of an alien life form. That was the same location that we were getting the Roswell rods, which I also covered in another video. This place was so weird. It had a little bit of everything. 
So it was originally built, like, I think in the late 1800s. I don't have all the history. I'm not here to go over the history with you guys on this place. But it was a man and a woman that actually lived in this house. They basically ran the town of Paonia for many years. We caught the man's shadow on tape several times. We only showed the, the best one, so you'll see that. I don't know if you guys ever saw this movie, and it has Catherine Zeta-Jones, Owen Wilson, Liam Nielsen, or Niel Neeson, sorry, and Lily Taylor. She's like a big actress too. It's called The Haunting. Have you ever seen this? And basically it's this woman in the middle. Um, they've all been summoned to this house somehow, and sh this actress right in the middle ends up becoming related to the... Um, the dead owner of the house. It's this like, they show him, it's this big man and he would like starve the children. Anyway, it's a big movie. I don't want to explain the movie. If you've seen this movie and you remember the apparition, it is the, the male, the dominant male apparition, that is the same kind of apparition we caught at the Bross Hotel. Very large, very intimidating. And it was almost like every different layer of the house there was different things on each floor. So the main floor was like the living area and like the, the inn um, the, where you would check in to stay at the inn and uh, she would make breakfast so she had like this huge kitchen area and then she had the dining area. And I think that was haunted by maids. And then you went upstairs and I think that there was like one of the kids haunted one of the rooms. He wasn't a kid, he was older when he died but he haunted it. And then the parents were there, this big dominant male, Mr. and Mrs. Bross. And then the basement was something completely different. I don't even think it was related to this family. I think that it was like alien activity. I actually, I'm in a book, actually. I've been interviewed for a couple of books, but one of the books that I'm, I'm in, if you guys get a chance, it's called uh, Wild West Ghosts. And it's by this awesome lady named Kim and Mark. And they're married, and they interviewed me about the Bross Hotel. And so I'm actually in this. It's not very much, but I'm in this um, for a little teeny interview. But they went to the Bross, and they had some similar experiences there. We went to downtown Paonia, and it's literally one street. Um, if, I can show, if I can find a picture, I'll, I'll hopefully have it up right now. And it's one street, and that's it. That's the main town. It hasn't been rebuilt since it was built in the 1900s, 1800s. So the buildings are very old, they're, they're old wood. We decided to go with my crew to go shoot some like B-roll footage, which is just random footage that you'll see, you know, in Ghost Adventures or any of those. And the townspeople didn't like outsiders there and they called the sheriff and the police in while we were in Paonia. Of course, myself or my crew was not doing anything illegal or anything we shouldn't be doing, but they knew that we weren't from there. And so they sent the police to the main, um, the main drag and, you know, public property, um, most states it depends, but in Colorado, as long as you're on public property, so a sidewalk, you can film without a permit, you know, you can just like your iPhone, whatever. They did not like it. So the police actually stayed with us while we were filming and um, tried to hurry us up out of there. They just don't want anybody there to film or bring any sort of possibly negative attention to their city considering this place is so haunted. So the police were not talkative. They didn't talk to us. They just watched us the whole time and they were kind of shooing us to hurry. They didn't want to be there. They didn't want us to be there. The locals were concerned that we were going to break into their businesses. So in the meantime, when we were walking back, by the time we finished filming, I would say it was about 9 o'clock at night, and we were going to go back to the Bross Hotel to start the investigation. And we realized as we were walking by the Bross Hotel, there is a church across the street. And they had, um, a, you know, it's a big church. I, I don't know if it's Catholic or not. But anyway, it has stained glass. And um, it was very strange. It was like, why were people in that church at 9 o'clock at night? And it was like chanty. It was very chanty. And you could see the bodies of them almost like doing this like prayer thing. And many. And it was almost like so many people in there. The, the town wasn't big enough for that many people and that building 
didn't seem like it was big enough to hold that many people. So we were very inquisitive about that. So we went on with the investigation. We had a lot of stuff happen. I wish I could have shown more footage that wasn't ruined, but it was just so chatty. You guys would be so annoyed. And I don't like to put products out there that are crappy. So anyways, we went to bed probably about five o'clock in the morning. We decided to get some sleep until about 10. And then we were gonna get up and make the four hour drive back to Denver, except something was going to be waking us up at 6 a.m. So I usually separate the boys from the girls on the production staff. Um, if we sleep at a location that we investigate at, I try to use as least amount of bedrooms as possible because the innkeepers and the intakers have to clean up after us and wash the bedding and I don't like to have them, you know, I don't want to mess up a bunch of rooms. It's not fair. So I will split all the girls sleep in one room and all the boys sleep in one room. The boys went up to the third floor to sleep and the girls were sleeping on a room with myself on the second floor. And after they went up there at about 5 a.m., the boys came racing back downstairs, banging on our door, saying that apparently all of the doors on that floor were opening and closing simultaneously to each room. And I think that there was four to eight rooms per floor, and we didn't have that happen to us. So the boys begged us to stay in the room. I don't usually do that, but they refused to sleep by themselves. So I made the boys sleep on the floor. All of the girls were able to share the beds and everybody basically went to sleep. I'm laughing because it was ridiculous. Like I, it was like slumber party and like everyone was, it was like a scared slumber party. So after I made sure everyone got to sleep, I was just hyped up from the investigation, but I was silent and I was in bed and I was just thinking about everything that had happened. And I had gotten to that point where I just dozed off. And I woke up to hearing this faint chanting. And I opened my eyes and I looked over at the alarm clock that was just, you know, there from the innkeeper and I realized it was 6 a.m. I couldn't figure out, I was like so tired and out of it, I was like, is it Sunday? It's not Sunday, because maybe that's church, I don't know. And all of a sudden the chanting starts getting louder and louder. At this point, my eyes are wide awake. It's so loud. It's as if we went to bed with the windows wide open. And the windows were closed, completely closed. One of the guys that was on set with us, we will call T, was laying on the floor. All of a sudden he says, do you guys hear that? Well, apparently him and I were the only ones that heard it and we were the only ones that were awake. And I responded with, yes, what is that? And he was like, I have no idea what that is. So the only way I can explain this without sounding crazy is there was a handy cam, like a Sony handy cam that we had set on each nightstand. And that was just in case something happened. Um, there was just so much activity that we could just accessibly grab a handy cam, one of us, and, and start shooting. T and I could not move. I, um, I would like to think that I was frozen in fear or I would like to, to use that as an excuse, but <clears throat> I'm not that kind of person. I don't, I can't say I'm not afraid of this stuff. It's just that I like to document this stuff. I, I like to, you know, have proof and all that stuff. So I'm not the kind that would have waited to grab a handy cam. We couldn't move. We were frozen. Um, was I possessed? No, I wasn't possessed. I felt like something wasn't letting us. I don't know what that means. I can't even tell you guys what that means. I could not grab a camera, T could not grab a camera. All we could do was talk and we were so terrified that we were whispering. Everyone else was asleep. The chanting was so loud at this point that we could distinguish that it was males doing the chanting and then females doing the chanting. And so I can't, it wasn't our language. So I can't tell you what they were saying. I can't even tell you a word, not even one, because I couldn't understand it. So it would be like high pitched females, many. I'm not talking like five or 10, I'm, I'm talking many. 
So it would be like, ha, 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 ha. And then the men would go, ha, 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 ha. And so to do it like it sounded, it, ha, 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 ha. And it went on and on. And I mean, honest to God, guys, I think it could have been going on for like 30 to 45 minutes. The weirder thing was that T and I started kind of like yelling louder to get all the other production staff to wake up. No one would wake up. Why, I don't know. I mean, like shouting at somebody, you'd think that they would freak out, especially in a haunted place. No, nobody, nobody budged. We couldn't move. It was like if somebody, you know, like when you're a kid and they go snug as a bug in a rug and they like tuck you in bed. It was like someone had tucked me in bed, but my sheets weren't tucked in. And it was like I was just frozen. I couldn't move. So after this happened, all of a sudden it just stopped. And he's like, are you still up? And I'm like, yeah. Like, what the hell was that? We never could figure it out. The next day, when I asked the innkeeper about, you know, the attic, if you guys watched the episode, we heard walking around in the attic. I asked the innkeeper, where is the access to the attic? I would just like to document where the attic is. I'd like to go up there and see it. And that's when the innkeeper said, no one could have been walking around in the attic because this house doesn't have an attic. I said, okay, that makes no sense. Someone sounded like they were walking in the attic. She's like, there's no attic. And I checked, like we actually went upstairs and looked in every room, every hallway to make sure, even the outside entrances to make sure it wasn't one of those old school ones where you have to put a ladder up to it, no entrance whatsoever. And then actually when you realize on the third floor, when you look up at the ceiling, it's not like a typical, like if a house is like this and then the attic would be built on top of this, you know, layer in this little corner area. No, it was totally open. You know, the roofing inside was open, so you could tell there there was no attic. In the dark, we couldn't see that. I asked the innkeeper about the chanting. I said, is the local church pagan? I don't know. Like, um, maybe it wasn't really pagan. It's Is there Wiccans? Is there um, black magic people, satanic worshipers? Um, can you like give me an example, you know, like, um, do you know anybody with like cult around here? I don't know. We heard this. And so T and I both explained to her what we heard and she was like, no, this town is very, very Catholic for the most part. And I was like, dude, I did not hear Catholic chanting. Like that was not Catholic. Anyways, I don't know what that was. If you guys have ever heard of this or if you've ever experienced this with the alien activity that we had in the basement. I feel like that's where I correlate that chanting with. I don't know how else, it wouldn't make sense. The, whatever the voices were, whatever the amount of, of energies, it wasn't in the room. It was outside, outside on the ground. It, was, um, it wasn't language from anything I've heard. Like I've heard people speak French. I know what German sounds like. I've heard Spanish. I've, you know, I, it was not, it didn't sound like it was from this planet. That's really all I have to say about that. If you have any idea what I'm talking about or if you've heard this or you've heard of this, please leave me a comment below and give me information that you know regarding it. Please give my video a thumbs up. Please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Leave me comments below about this crazy experience I had or anything that you guys want me to chat about and I will catch you guys next time. We're back from dead and back.